Good to go. You clear it. Thank you. All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chef Cheryl Tate, and this is the Chef and with Cheryl show. This prod, this show is brought to you by the LA South Hope Foundation, which is the nonprofit arm of the LA South Chamber of Commerce, where we instill hope in people, which is helping other people every day. And I really want to you know, show some appreciation for this platform because we're about helping other people every day. And that is what we aim to do. That is what I strive to do every day. And I'm just excited about this situation. I am so, so jazzed about this show today. We're talking about pantry basics, okay? Now, we all, you know, we all like to eat. Come on now, we all love to eat and you know, some of us don't like to cook and we find ourselves, you know, looking at other ways to eat food, you know, you know, we have pushing a button, you know, for those um DoorDash and all those things, but it's really not that healthy. I have found over the course of my life that when you cook your own food, or when someone cooks food for you, it's the, the situation is a little bit more, uh, it's healthier, okay? When you know someone is taking an interest in preparing food for you, you know, that, that contributes to your well-being. So if you're cooking your own food, then you are contributing to your well-being. If you're a person that's in charge of cooking meals for the family, that's a very big responsibility. You know, you're, you're, you have people's lives in your hands. So it's a really big responsibility. So you need to be prepared for that. And cooking is no one shot deal, okay? Because we all like to eat, we all like to eat different things. So when you're coming into the kitchen and you're going to be cooking something, you have to be prepared. And that's where a pantry comes in. And when I say pantry, it's just not about uh, your cupboard. When I say a stock pantry, I mean your whole kitchen. Your whole kitchen is because, of, of, of course, you're reaching in your refrigerator to, go, you know, to use something to cook. You're reaching in your cupboards. You're reaching in, in for your spices. You're reaching for your oils. So it would be, you know, just, again, we want to keep the stress level down and make sure we have everything in our kitchen to, to cook, okay? So there's some preparation that needs to happen. You got to go to the store. You got to do some things. You have to buy some things. Now, we're in a really interesting decade. I'm not going to call this a year because at the start of 2020, you know, we had things going on. Okay. And um, because of, uh, you know, a national health crisis and everything, some of us weren't able to work. Some of us weren't able to gain money. Some of us were without food. So were there a lot of subsidies of people giving out food? There were food boxes given away. You could line up and get six, seven, and a ninth, whatever kind of food you wanted. All you had to do was look it up or call somebody or know something. But somebody was giving away food, okay? And that's wonderful because that adds to your pantry. Anytime somebody can give you some food that you can store away for another time, that's a blessing. Okay, so with that being said, we should have some canned goods. We should have some canned goods in our cupboards. We should have some, some staples in there that somebody has donated to us. So we're going to go through some of them because a stock pantry is really, you know, I mean, a stock pantry means you should be able to walk inside and lock and load. Okay, so... This, I'm, I'm going to try to give you the basics, but I'm going to give you some things that you also could work with also, okay? We're going to go with basics because I did a lot of research. I looked at other people and um, looked at, I um, went on Pinterest and I said, okay, pantry staples. What pantry staples are important to these people? What pantry staples are important to these people? I looked up 
you know, dinner ideas that you could do with a stock pantry and not so stock pantry. So we're going to go basic and then we're going to go to the other end of it. We're going to go to the other end of the spectrum because we know having a stock pantry means you can go in there and you can do anything you need to do. Okay. So we have guests here. And they always like to be heard, okay? But, okay, for a basic pantry, just a basic pantry, you know, you're going to need flour because, of course, you're baking. And, of course, when you're baking, you know, if you're making a gravy of some kind, if you're making a stock of some kind, you're going to need some flour. Okay, so flour is just, that's just a necessity of things that you need, okay? So we're going to say that. flour sugar, oats, oats, okay? We need, these are things we should have in our, and I'm going to say this, I, I, I don't mean to sound redundant, but these are things that you should have in your kitchen because, okay, oats is a good thing. You can bake with them, you can cook with them, but it's a great breakfast cereal, okay? And if you have oats, you can make Oatmeal, okay? And with oatmeal, you know, that's breakfast. You're going to have milk. You're going to have sugar. It's a staple, okay? Because so much you can do with it. So much you can do with it, okay? All right? So cocoa powder, that's not something that you probably want on the top of your list because you want to start with basics, okay? So, but just remember, and plus, we will have these links at the end of the... Um, at the end of the show, this is on YouTube. We're gonna have these links where you can look at a pantry list and you can have a checklist so you can do this yourself because it's important. I want you to be able to go into the kitchen and to be able to easily make something, okay? Um, we're in an economy where food may be expensive and it may be a little cheaper to maybe push a button, but not really when it comes to your health. OK, because when you're cooking for yourself, um, you know, th that's an act of self-love, really, because you're you're nourishing yourself as opposed to pushing a button. And you don't know what that person's thinking about when they're cooking your burger or whatever they're doing. So this is just a little bit of information that I want you to take with you. I want you to keep thinking about. Just keep thinking about. It, OK. Now. We should all have spices in our pantry, okay? Because of course we need to season our food, okay? Me being a culinary professional, you know, I'm always looking for a spice blend. I don't have time to put the cumin and the oregano and the chili powder together for my Mexican food. I'm just gonna go straight to a spice blend. Spice blend. I rely on them. We'll make a suggestion that you rely on them too. This is Penzi spices. I talk about them all the time. I've even written the Penzi's and told them, hey, you know, I'm always promoting your spices and maybe we'll get some love. But at the same token, it's a no brainer with these. I mean, I have several, several spice blends for different foods. Okay. I just picked up this. This is good for my um, Mexican foods because it already has the spices in it we need. Okay, it already has the cumin, the garlic, the paprika, the lemon peel. It's already done for you. It's already done for you. So if you can remember just a spice blend, and again, this is what's in my pantry list. It doesn't say, oh yes, cumin, oregano, but at the end it says, get a spice blend. Okay, so you know they're on the right track as far as knowing how to cut your time down. Okay, hey, because we're in a busy world. And yes, you come home from work, you're not thinking about cooking, but really you should be. Really you should be. I'm gonna, I don't mean to be redundant, but I'm, I'm gonna keep saying that, okay? Dry goods. Okay, we all need dry goods in our pantry, okay? So I, you know, again, have had different uh, handouts and I have spaghetti, Spaghetti's a basic. Come on now. We all grew up on spaghetti and meatballs, okay? We all grew up on it. Mom made it. Okay, so we always have spaghetti in our pantry. 
And if you don't have spaghetti, you probably have another type of pasta, okay? This right here is some fettuccine. I love fettuccine, you know. Uh, fettuccine is, you know, of course, Alfredo with the white sauce. Everybody loves it. It's another form of pasta, okay? Now, here I have several others. Here's my spaghetti because I really wanted to give you just a basic, basic um, example. But here's some different pasta shapes. Here's the farfel, which is the bow tie. Of course, we have our fettuccine. We have our little wiggle. I'm, on, I'm sorry, I don't know what the name of it is. A little wiggle pasta, but it's really fun. You know, it, 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 makes, it makes eating exciting. Okay, so let's say you're making some spaghetti and you want to have some fun. You could use a little squiggle pasta, you know, along with your tomato sauce and your meat. And it doesn't have to be, you know, the kids will like it. They'll say, oh, look at the little squiggly stuff. So again, these are things that you can work on having in your pantry. It's okay because, uh, you know, having a pantry is, you know, it, it's an ongoing process because you're cooking and you're, you know, uh, restocking your pantry. So that's definitely something that, you know, you definitely have to have some pasta. Definitely have to have some pasta, okay? Next are grains. Okay, rice is our most basic one. That's very true. Okay, but what I have found, and this is just over my career of cooking and everything, is that there's different types of rice. There's different colored rice. As we look in nature, you know, we have purple potatoes, we have red potatoes, we have black rice, and we also have red rice. These are things that come from nature, okay? So what I have here is some black rice and I have it mixed with some jasmine rice because last month when we were at a lunch and learn, I made um, some black rice with some jasmine rice. Now, black rice is beautiful. It, it's dark right now. And then when you cook it, it'll get a little purpley, but it's still a dark color, okay? So I mixed it with jasmine rice so it, you know, you know, people have a thing about eating dark food. I don't know why, but with the jasmine rice, you know, it it, it made it so well. You 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 were more apt to go take a spoon of it as opposed to it being just all dark. And I have to add that black rice is one of the most nutritious things. And I'm gonna repeat it again. It is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet based on its color. <laughs> it is nutrient dense, okay? Nutrient dense, meaning that it's got a lot of vitamins, it's got a lot of minerals. Um, it was called forbidden rice. And it was called forbidden rice for a reason because rice being an, a very, very old grain, okay? The emperor back in the day would not have the peasants of the village eat this because he wanted it for his family. He wanted it for his family and his concubines. He didn't want everybody to be well, okay? So the reason why it was called forbidden was if you cultivated and cultivated it and uh, ate it, you would be killed. This is true, please look it up, okay? So with that in mind, we should be eating this all the time, okay? <laughs> Seriously, with that in mind, knowing that somebody ancient years ago said, we don't want anybody eating this because it's good for us. We should make a note to be eating it ourselves, okay? It staves off uh, dementia because it is, uh, again, very nutrient, very nutrient dense. And it's also good for diabetic because it satisfies you. And if it satisfies you, then you're not going to eat as much. And again, the nutrients and the vitamins in it will take care of the body. So black rice, I can't say enough about black rice. I could talk about everything on this table here, but I could talk for an hour about black rice. Google it. You can find it in at uh, Trader Joe's. You can also find it at Winco in the bulk section. You can go online. You can go online. But I like to say, if you go to Winco and you get it, you can buy it in the bulk food section. You can buy it for as much or as little as you want at a decent price. So again, I can't rave enough about uh, black rice. Please look into it, please. I beseech thee, dear brother. Okay, this is couscous. This is another grain that we can have on hand. You know, 
grains, you know, like rice, like these two rices here and the couscous. I always have a challenge when I try to cook it, okay? Because rice is a two to one ratio. Even this black rice, black rice is a two to one ratio. Two cups water, one cup rice, two, two to one ratio, okay? Couscous is another grain that it's really nutritious. I would say Google it to learn to learn how to cook it because I always Google it to learn how to cook it. This is just not one of these things I cook all the time or I have a memory of how I'm going to cook it, but it's an excellent grain. It's an excellent grain. It should be something that you have on your shelf. It should be something that you have on your shelf, okay? So these are your dry goods, okay? Now, another dry good that's here is breadcrumbs. Now, breadcrumbs play an important part in your kitchen because they do so many things. Yes, you can coat it, you fry chicken when you're about to fry it or bake it, but it's also good in your meatloaf, okay, because it is a filler, okay? Just like the oatmeal, it's like the oatmeal is, is a filler, so is the breadcrumb. So I have panko, which are a little crunchier, and I have the regular seasoned breadcrumbs. I like to use them together. I like to use them together when I'm making uh, a fried chicken or a baked fish of some kind because you get the crunch and you also get the coverage. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful staples that you should have in your kitchen. You're not gonna use them all the time. You're not gonna use them all the time. With the same token, we need to have them. And then at some, you know, by the end of this show, we'll talk about, you know, how you rotate your pantry. Because again, things, if you're not cooking them as much as you should, you're going to have to go back through and pull some out and, you know, and restock. Okay. We live in Southern California. So we are exposed to Hispanic culture. Okay, tortillas are dry goods. They're considered a dry good. Okay, just like a slice of bread. I don't have any. I don't have any bread in my house, but I have tortillas. Okay, I'm just not eating as much starch as I used to, but I can have some tortillas. I can have some corn. Okay, if we have some meat left over, if we have a chicken that we baked. We can pull out a tortilla. And we can make it happen, okay? This is a staple, you know? We live in Southern California. We can't get over these things that we're, uh, that we're exposed to and easily exposed to. We can find a tortilla fast and we can find some bread. Interesting, but that's okay because it's corn, okay? And it's good corn. There's no flour, so for us, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, gluten intolerant people. This is a gluten free food. Okay, so that's something to remember when we're out and we're cooking. And oh my goodness, you might be cooking for somebody that they don't, you know, that they have a um, a gluten intolerance. You can give them a you can give them a tortilla. That'd be always be good. Okay. So condiments. And like I said, we live in Southern California. Okay. And even though we, uh, this is 50 states, you know, we're in Southern California. If you were to look up what is the number one condiment, I would say in America, not maybe in other countries, but in America, in the United States, the number one condiment is salsa, okay? It's not ketchup. It's not mustard, it's salsa. So if you understand the influence that, you know, that Hispanic community has on us, this is the number one staple, okay? What do we eat salsa with? We eat salsa with everything, chips, on our food. Uh, you could put it in whatever it is that you're seasoning. It's okay, you can do that. It's very good food, very good to have. We should have salsa in our pantry, okay? Pasta sauce, all right? Now this is a little bit more, it's a little bit more Americana, okay? Because of course you can make your spaghetti 
Okay. No, we should have, we should be able to do anything. When we come home, we should have some spaghetti and some pasta sauce. Okay. These are things that we should have. Sorry for being redundant, but these are things that we should have in our kitchen if we need to be able to cook something quickly. Okay. Oils. All right. We should, I always use olive oil. Okay, when I'm sauteing, when I'm cooking, not frying, not frying, there's another oil for that. But olive oil should be your main condiment as far as when you're around the kitchen and you're doing something. Olive oil is very good for you. Okay, olives are just a wonderful fruit. Uh, they will sustain you. Um, olive oil is really good. Uh, it's good for your skin. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the kitchen all the time. I always tell people, you don't, you know, you know, olive oil is a very good condiment. Okay. Now, as far as having other oils in your kitchen, I would suggest you have some sesame oil, not so much high on the list, but you should have it when you're doing your, uh, when you're doing your Asian cooking, when you're doing your shrimp fried rice and your, uh, you know, when you're doing your Asian cooking, because it adds flavor, you're not necessarily going to use it to saute. You're going to use it to flavor the food. Okay. Sesame oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil is awesome. Coconut oil has so many uses. I tell people, buy a big jar, split it in half, put some in the kitchen, put some in the bathroom because it's very good for your skin. I mean, it's it's just very good for your skin. Sometimes we don't need to go to a drugstore to put, you know, to have wonderful skin. Okay. But for the kitchen, this is a very good oil to use. Very good. Okay. We can talk about coconut oil like black rice till the cows come home because the benefits of it are very good. So oils, we have olive oil, we have coconut oil, we have sesame oil and again it doesn't help to have a vegetable spray okay because of course when you're cooking and you know you need something non-stick in your skillet this is a good thing to have so again pantries you know to have a really good pantry is going to take time because you're going to have to spend a little money but when you spend that money know that you have the confidence of coming in your kitchen and doing what you need to do correctly okay so that is what it's about that's the whole reason for having a pantry you know you can't paint a picture if you don't have a great canvas and so when you think about food that plate being the finished product you want to make sure you have all the ingredients to have a good outcome so that's why you know when we talk about having a pantry it's important that we have you know build it it's important that we build it so oils, vinegars, okay? Now, I have this white distilled vinegar in my kitchen because I use it for other things aside from cooking, okay? But it's definitely an integral part of your kitchen. Let's not get it wrong, okay? It's very good for when you're baking, I find, okay? Because all they want is just a teaspoon of it. So have it in your kitchen. This is one of the least expensive, the cheapest, excuse me, vinegars that you will buy. White vinegar, okay? Right? Red wine vinegar, okay? This is more of a flavoring, more of a seasoning when you're making your salad dressings with your olive oil. Red wine vinegar is good to have. Good to have in the pantry. Rice vinegar. Again, when I, again, I was talking about your Asian flavorings, your Asian foods, this is a good staple to use when you're cooking those types of foods, okay? You'll understand when you start putting them together, the flavorings and the profiles, okay? So sweeteners, sweeteners, okay? Agave nectar is wonderful. It's a wonderful sweetener. It has a low glycemic value. 
meaning that someone who is diabetic, they can use this and their uh, sugar won't spike, if that is the correct, uh, that's the correct saying, your, your, your glycemia won't go up. Okay, so it has a low glycemic index. So you can use this with some degree of comfort that your uh, glycemic index won't go up and down, okay? As opposed to sugar, as opposed to sugar, because we know that's a different type of sweetener. But at the same time, I have some sugar right here. I have some sugar right here. And I have, of course, because you know I, I don't really have a, a small container, but I have some sugar right here. Now, one of the things that I like to tell people Whenever you're buying food, the color is important. Color is very, very, it, it, it's critical when you're cooking, okay? Because the more color it has, the more nutrients it has. I can go back to that back, black rice, can't I? Okay, because I talked about color, okay? The more color it has, the more nutrients that it has. Okay, so we can talk about the uh, agave nectar. It's a dark color, okay? It's not like corn syrup, which is clear, okay? And that, you know, uh, high fructose corn syrup is not very good for it. It's a good, it's a sweetener. It's a cheap sweetener that has been used in place of sugar over the past 20 years. And sometimes I feel that that is why we have an obesity situation because we're not... We're, one, we're not exercising, but two, we're not eating the correct foods. So here's some raw sugar. Again, I want you to look at this because it's dark. It's, it's you know, a dark brown. And that's because of the molasses and the nutrients that are still in the food. Okay, so when you're eating this, you're getting vitamins, you're getting minerals. Of course, you're getting sweetener, but you're adding two as opposed to white sugar, okay? Because white sugar is only sweet. It really doesn't have a good, um, matter of fact, if you, have, if you have too much white sugar, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like an overload, it's yucky. But that doesn't happen with raw sugar, okay? So again, remember color. Color is just very, very, very important when you're cooking. So when you're going out and you're shopping, Look for color, look for color, okay? Now, we talked about condiments. We talked about salsa being the number one, okay? But we still have to use ketchup. We still need ketchup. We still need mustard, okay? Barbecue sauce is an all-American favorite. It's an all-American favorite. We will never, ever, ever get away from barbecue sauce. We just won't. As Americans, we just won't. We're not going to do that, okay? So salsa may be number one, but we have all these condiments, these other condiments that fall into that. Now, let me just make a quick little, uh, quick little suggestion here because barbecue sauce is made up of the condiments I just showed you, not necessarily salsa, okay? But you have ketchup, you have vinegar, you have tomato paste, okay? Pineapple juice, interesting, there's pineapple juice in barbecue sauce, wow, molasses, okay? So we can make our own barbecue sauce if we wanted to, if we had a stock pantry, these things are definitely, uh, they can be made. Okay, so one can, you know, once you have a stock pantry and you start looking at some recipes, you can get excited. Well, you can say, well, I have all those things in my pantry. Let me go in here and do this. You know, it's exciting. It makes it exciting because you're prepared. You have everything you need. That's a great thing. That's really a great thing. Okay. And again, I say this not because I'm a culinary professional, but because I like to eat. Okay. <laughs> and I like to eat good food. So if that means I need to go in my kitchen and prepare those things so I can eat good. So somebody comes over and I can give them a nice plate. That's satisfaction. That is well-being, knowing that 
you were able to accomplish something. You were able to feed somebody. That's health and wellness. That's health and wellness. We, 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 we really can just stop right there. Health and wellness is your well-being, is taking care of your health, being conscious. So yes, you could say that having a stock pantry is part of your health and wellness, okay? Because it reduces that stress level. You're not going outside and, and, and trusting someone else to prepare your food. You're taking that responsibility upon yourself, okay? Really, really, really important. All right, getting back to pantries. Nut butters. Peanut butter. Where would peanut butter be? In your pantry. We know we have some. We should have some, okay? Because there's always that peanut butter and jelly sandwich that, you know, you might want to eat during the day, you know, instead of reaching for something sugary. You can just have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on a slice of bread. That's fine. That's wonderful. We always have them. This was one of the staples that um, I found were in care packages when they were being given out. So peanut butter. Now, if you all know Chef Cheryl, you know I am a hummus person. I love hummus, okay? This is tahini. Tahini is ground sesame seeds, okay? Peanut butter is ground peanuts. So when you're looking for it in the store, you're going to find them together. You're going to find them together on the same aisle, okay? Because this is a seed. It's just a ground seed. You know, this is a Mediterranean staple, okay? When I say staple, it's a staple. This is what's on their shelves. If it's not on their shelves, they're grinding their own sesame seeds, okay? And again, it's a seed. It's healthy. This is my go-to when I'm making my hummus because, of course, the basis for hummus is garlic, tahini, and beans, lemon, olive oil, what have you. You can't have, can't have hummus without tahini, okay? So, and this also makes a very good uh, sauce, a very good base for sauce. And um, just, you know, if we were to look up recipes with tahini, it, we would have numerous, 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 numerous. Okay, so very good staple to have. And again, it's like your peanut butter. So it's not gonna go bad. It's not gonna go bad. I don't, I, as much as I have, bought tahini. I really can't tell you if I ever saw uh, an expiration date. But of course, with anything, you want to use it within a certain amount of time. But still, it can be on your shelf for some time. So if you want to make uh, hummus every other month, you can have that. It'll be in the cupboard. You just put it in a um, cool, dark place right next to your peanut butter. You should be fine. Right next to your peanut butter, you should be fine. All righty. Canned goods, we have them. We should have a lot of them, all right? So we know, again, I'm gonna say pantries are just not limited to um, canned goods. You know, it, it's, it's the whole kitchen. But canned goods are a good foundation, okay? Because again, we're looking at things that can go in your kitchen that can be there for some time, all right? Now, when they were distributing food, this is what they, this is what they were giving away. They were giving away tomatoes, canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes have a very long shelf life. This is 2024. They probably got it last year, so it has a shelf life, okay? These are things that were given to me, okay? Green beans. We can never be without green beans. We can never be without a can of green beans, okay? Pears, pears, peaches, okay? These canned goods are, st they're staples, okay? These are things we need in our pantry to have. Okay, you may be hungry one day. You don't want to go out and eat anything. There's no cookies in the house, okay? There's nothing wrong with opening up a can of pears. Nothing wrong open up a can of pears, and eating some pears. That's what we did when we were kids. Ate a can of pears or a can of peaches, maybe with some ice cream or some cinnamon. That was it. But we had it. 
it wasn't hard to find. We didn't have to go out and look for it, okay? Now, I'm just going to go just a little bit deeper on here as far as canned goods are concerned. You know, we should all have uh, an emergency pantry, okay? You know, we're living in some interesting times here. It's really important that we have something aside from our pantry that we go to every day when we're going to cook that we can access in case of emergency. How long, I mean, we're, we're, we're in, you know, this is Southern California. We understand that there's an earthquake coming. We don't know when it's coming, but we need to have something over on the side that's going to last us, you know, for however long the catastrophe or whatever goes on. So I would say, start buying canned goods. If there's a food giveaway somewhere, start collecting them. Put them away. Put them somewhere where you can easily access them with a can opener. Don't forget the can opener. But uh, put them away where you know that you have in easy access to, along with your other, along with your other condiments and your other uh, supplies that's going to keep you. So this little bitty tidbit. Make sure that you have an emergency pantry. Okay. Again, with canned goods. Okay, so here we have our tomato sauce. No, excuse me, crushed red tomatoes, which is really good. And here we have a pasta sauce. Okay, tomatoes, you know, they, 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 they stay canned for a very long time. Again, vegetables, fruit. Okay, now again, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking about your pantry, which you should have in your kitchen, but I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that you should have in your emergency pantry. Okay, so. Some things that you can have in your emergency pantry, which of course you can have in your pantry. Buy two cans, one for your pantry, one for your emergency pantry. Chili. Chili, remember when I said you, you, you come home, you're hungry, you don't really know what to eat. You don't want to go outside. You don't want to spend any money. What's wrong with a can of chili? This is Hormel. We grew up on Hormel, okay? And it has a wonderful expiration date of 2026, okay? Very good example of something you should have in your pantry, okay? Very good example. And again, this is something that was given to me in a care package, okay? Which is a beef stew, okay? And it is fully cooked and ready to serve. So this would be an ideal, an ideal thing to put in your emergency pantry, okay? doesn't require a can opener, doesn't require heating up, cut it, put it in a bowl or put a spoon in it. Here it is, okay? So just remember, a pantry is something that you can always go to for something. In your emergency pantry, you, you know, you're gonna, in time, God forbid something happens anytime soon, but when you have that pantry, you're gonna go, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I did that, you know, because it'll be one less thing that you have to worry about, one less thing you have to think about in that situation, if you know what I mean, okay? That, again, promotes to your health and wellness because if something happens and you're prepared, guess what? That's one less stressor that we have to deal with, okay? So, again, we're talking about pantry and those things that you should put in your emergency pantry, okay? Beans, 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 beans. We can't say it enough. Beans. Okay. <laughs> we should have a stock pantry of beans. These are kidney beans. I usually have garbanzo beans because I'm making hummus. I don't have any garbanzo beans right now because I've been making hummus. I have to go restock my pantry of garbanzo beans. But kidney beans, garbanzo beans, uh, Black beans, black eyed peas. Now, again, um, you know, Chef, you know, Chef is always talking about Winco because I understand that our food dollar doesn't buy as it used to. I read the news all the time and it talks about food prices going up so many percentages. It really hurts. It really hurts because I understand that there's people that may have a fixed income. You know, they, they don't make money here and there. Okay, so you have to, you know, really count your dollars. 
And to go to these stores in the city and see the prices that they charge, it just, it hurts my heart. It just hurts my heart. It really does. It really does. You know, sorry, my inflection. But <laughs> if you were to go to certain places, and again, Winco Foods is my favorite spot out in Lakewood, California, you will find that your food dollar goes further, okay? And if you can buy a can of beans for 48 cents, okay, 48 cents, as opposed to going in the 99 cent store and maybe paying a dollar or something because it's not, not 99 cents anymore. Just think of if you had a dollar something and you were in the store, you could buy two cans, okay? So this, this is really something that's near and dear to me because I understand that your food dollar, you know, it has to be stretched. You know, if, if anything we have to eat, we put gas in our car, but we have to eat, okay? And if you're cooking for yourself, you know, and you're going in the stores, it can be discouraging. It really can be discouraging. So I would encourage you to go somewhere where you know your food dollar goes further. Okay, and Winco Foods is one of my favorite places. I'm definitely going to put that in the notes in um, at the end of this show. So just remember, you want to be able to stretch your dollar as much as you can. Stretch your dollar as much as you can. And again, a pantry is not necessarily uh, just, uh, it's not about canned foods, okay? So, what other things should we have in our pantry? Okay, so we talked about, of course, in your baking, you need your flour, you need your baking powder, you need your baking soda. Now, again, um, because I go to Winco, I buy most of my stuff in bulk, as you will see with my couscous. Um, it, you know, it, I, bought, I bought it out the bulk section. And here's my baking soda. I bought it out the bulk section. So, Again, as much or as little as you need, make sure you have. As much or as little as you need, make sure you have, okay? Now, a pantry, again, is not limited to your canned goods. It means your whole kitchen, okay? So that means your freezer, okay? That means your freezer, it means your refrigerator, it means having what you need on hand to do what you need to do. Okay, well, goodness, we have tortillas, okay? That's our staple, okay? Okay, but we should also have some frozen meats in our freezer, okay? So this is ground turkey, ground beef is good, ground chicken, you know, whatever is, whatever suits you, but make sure you have it. Make sure you have it because with some meat and we have spaghetti and we have pasta, okay, that's some spaghetti, all right? All right, and so here we have green beans and, um, excuse me, ground turkey. Okay, so we've got hamburgers with some, you know, with some vegetables, okay? And then if we wanted to, we could, you know, cook a little pasta and put a little seasoning on it. So there's all your food groups, okay? Now, again, we're in Southern California. You can cook this up with some Mexican seasoning. And here's your tortillas, here's tacos, okay? Because again, if you have certain things in your, um, in your pantry, like frozen, frozen turkey or something like that, should have cheese, okay? Again, your refrigerator is part of your pantry too. So you need to make sure that you have these things in your refrigerator. Cheese never hurts. Cheese never hurts to have, uh, to have a little bit on hand. Whether you have the black cheese, whether you have the shredded cheese, this is some Mexican cheese. Oh my God, I'm already ready for my taco, okay? I'm already ready for my enchilada, for my quesadilla. I'm already ready because I've got my cheese, I've got my tortillas, I've got my meat, okay? I've already got that foundation, okay? So this is Mexican cheese, that's fine, okay? So again, we're making the spaghetti. My gosh, here's the, here's the, ground, the ground meat, we have spaghetti, 
We have the pasta sauce. Well, goodness, here's some Italian cheese that you can put on top of it when you're done. Okay? So, you know, when you're cooking and you are thinking of what it is that you're going to eat and you're going to buy these foods, again, this is going to last in your refrigerator for, I'd say, about maybe maybe three months, maybe two to three months or something like that because it's a hard cheese. You know, it, it's not like uh, your white cheeses that are going to break down after a while. But this, you know, this cheese, again, is good for your Italian toppings, your spaghetti, your pasta, your Alfredo, your lasagna. Okay. Always, always good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and if, I'm, if I can't say anything, you know, we have to hydrate. You should always be drinking water. I always like to uh, plug Kangan water, Miss uh, Isabel. Really good water. We should always be hydrating, okay? So we should always be hydrating. I'll just say that again. Kangen water, right? So along with all those things that I talked about with our pantry, okay, so again, we have tomato sauce. We have uh, canned tomatoes. Here's tomato paste. Tomato paste usually comes in a can, but when you open that can, you have to use everything that's in the can, okay? I like a tube. I like a tube of tomato paste. Keeps in your refrigerator. Keeps about three, four months. And again, the idea with having a pantry is going in and cooking. Okay? We need to be going in and using all these ingredients to do what we need to do. Okay? And again, if we're making a soup, because we can take these things. Okay? Excuse me. We have green beans. We have... Uh, Something else here, we could make a soup, okay? Well, here's a soup base. And again, they have bouillon cubes, but I like a soup base. You know, everybody has their own choice of what it is that they need, but a soup base is something that you're easily just gonna go in and take a little spoon of. It's gonna stay in your refrigerator. It does have a good shelf life in your refrigerator. But the idea is, family, to use it. To use it when you're cooking your greens, when you're making your soups, anything. You need some flavoring aside from just water, okay? Aside from just water. Now, I talked about vegetables. I talked about canned vegetables. But look, we should be growing. We should be growing our foods. I have a garden and I have collard greens. My goodness, you know, this is awesome. You know, just to grow things and to be able to go in your backyard and pick them and eat them. That's part of health and wellness because that definitely reduces your stress level. You know where it came from. It came out of your garden. You know, you're confident about that. Look at these. They're so beautiful. And mind you, family, I have tons of collard greens in my backyard. So if you know me, get in touch with me. I'll bring you a bag or you can come to Hawthorne and pick them because my collard green plant is overflowing. So when I say a pantry, again, it's not necessarily uh, confined to your cupboard. It's confined to your kitchen. It's confined to your house. Okay, because if you're growing herbs, if you're growing fruit, if you're growing vegetables, that's part of your pantry. Okay, so just remember this. These are just so beautiful. I just, I just love collard greens. I love collard greens. I talked about your freezer. Okay, again, we have frozen meat, but then again, uh, I put this, I put this in the sink because of course it's wet. We should have frozen vegetables. Okay, it's just very important that we have that we use everything in our kitchen, all the appliances in our kitchen to keep our foods, okay? So of course we have frozen vegetables, we have frozen fruit, okay? I And mind you, all this came from Winco, okay? So we'll put Winco's address at the bottom, okay? But again, here's some fruit, here's some frozen fruit. Wonderful for a smoothie in the morning. Wonderful for a smoothie in the morning. You don't have to go to Jamba Juice and make your, and, and, and spend some money on a on a smoothie. You can make it yourself. Again, that promotes your health and wellness. Okay. So remember, frozen foods. Okay. 
I talked about frozen meat, talked about the frozen turkey, okay? It doesn't hurt to have some frozen meat, of uh, uh, some, you know, like some chicken tenders of some kind. This, I happen to get it at uh, Costco, okay? And they're buffalo boneless chicken bites, all right? They're not really hot because when you think of buffalo chicken, you think of something that's hot. This is not really hot. It's just maybe a little, it's got a little heat to it, but it's a really good fast protein. It's a really good fast protein. So if you got your collard greens, you've got your rice going, you don't have a protein, you have this in the refrigerator, in the freezer, excuse me. You can microwave this in less than two and a half minutes, okay? To get dinner on the table, if you've got everything you've got going on here, your protein is your last one. So again, you know, I like to go, I'm perusing the, the, the frozen food aisle all the time because there's always something new. The manufacturers are always finding a way to get, uh, to make food uh, that can get to your table faster, okay? Um, this is a really good one. I found, uh, um, it was, uh, I think it was a uh, tri-tip or something, but it was in the frozen food section or it was just sirloin strips, okay? But they were frozen. They were already cooked and they were flash frozen. And all you had to do was pull them out and in 10 minutes you had it on your table, okay? That to me is genius because again, it's helping you get the food, the food to your table faster and you're doing it, okay? So it's okay to go in the frozen food section and pull out some things that are going to help you because you see the frozen vegetables and the frozen fruit will be in your it will be in your freezer until you're ready to use it. Okay. So we have covered a lot of things here as far as what to have in your pantry. Another thing to have in your pantry that I think is important is a canned meat. And again, you should have it in your pantry. In your emergency pantry because the the um, the shelf life of this on this this is 2026 okay this is 2026 for some tuna okay that's a long way away for you to put it on the shelf and not think about it so we we need to consider having this in our repertoire we need to consider having this on our shelves okay because no we're not going to wait till 2026 to eat it but gosh darn it, next week, if we want some tuna salad, we can definitely pop this open with some condiments and have lunch. Not hard to hear. So this is, this is canned tuna. I have salmon, okay? Chicken, all of these canned meats will last a while in your pantry, okay? This is 2020, this is 2024. So we need to understand that even though we're not going to, we can eat it right now, that's fine. But knowing that you have a pantry, that your foods are going to stay in there for some time is some consolation to you because we're constantly eating. We're always eating. And again, we have to restock our pantry, restock our pantry, excuse me, and go through it. Okay. So I would say every six months, you need to go through your pantry and see what it is that you've eaten, what it is that you need to replenish, what has been there for some time that you might need to throw out, okay? What has been there for some time and needs to be thrown out, things need to be thrown out. You know, as a chef, I'm going through people's kitchens when I'm working for them, and I may find something in their kitchen that was, you know, very old. <laughs> I will say four or five years old past their expiration date, and um, they're not going to miss it if you throw it away. You're not going to miss it if you throw it away because if it took you that long to um, not eat it, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. So having a pantry is, is work. But then again, in the end run, you're living better because you have your food at your disposal to eat what you want, to eat when you want. Now, one of the things that is just very good, and I have to say this again, when you cook your food, you are empowering yourself, okay? That adds to health and wellness. When you're cooking for people, 
you know, I have, I have a family of four, my two sons and my husband. I cooked every day. Okay. I looked, I made sure that the food was on the table every day. These are some healthy people. Now they cook themselves. Okay. They're looking at their pantry. They're going to look at mom's show and go, okay, I need to go through my pantry again. Cause you know, I remember how it was when mom was cooking. Okay. So you're setting an example, especially for the little kids. Okay. Because if they see you're confident in the kitchen and you got all your staples and you're doing everything you're going to be doing, that's going to make them curious. It's going to make them want to come in and say, I want to help. Okay. That's very empowering. That that adds, adds, adds to health and wellness of the family, of the body. Do you see what I'm saying? So all these things come together for a reason. So when I talk about having a, a stock pantry, when I talk about having these things on hand, it's to make your life better, okay? You're really being self-sustainable if that makes any sense. Okay, you don't have always have to go outside to spend your money. You've invested in your health. You've invested. That's a that, that's a really tall order. That's a really tall order. Okay. So with everything that I have shown here, there is at least four or five things that you could make. There's four or five things you can make. We could have barbecue, uh, have barbecue uh, turkey burgers with some black rice and some jasmine. And some, uh, and some edamame or some spinach or some collard greens. Come on now, okay? That's dinner. Doesn't take a whole lot, okay? What are you seasoning them with? Oh my goodness, you're seasoning with salt and pepper. Himalayan pink salt, if I haven't already said so, is what you should be using. Okay, I'm going to say this, but you should not have any white foods in your kitchen, okay? The only thing white you should have in your kitchen are grits, okay? Okay, I said it. But um, Himalayan pink salt with its 84 minerals and trace elements, okay? We should not be using white salt. When your doctor may say your sodium is high, um, he's saying the type of sodium that you're getting, okay? So if you are intaking Himalayan pink salt, um, you're still getting your sodium, but you're not getting... Um, all the other ingredients that come along with white salt. Because if it's white, it was another color at some time, it was bleach. Okay, so just remember, something was done to make it white. Okay, so I hope that in this little bit of time that I've shown you about just some pantry staples and some pantry basics, that you should be able to walk in your kitchen, and be able to perform and do something and cook something. Now, I'm a personal chef. I work with clients all the time. If you feel that you need some help, please, I am available to you, okay? I'm available to the community for any questions or any um, anything that you may need. If you're not sure what you need in your pantry, you can definitely get one of these, um, these handouts that I'm gonna have at the end of the show. That this, this is going to be on YouTube, so there will be some links there that you can get you a pantry list and you can look at as long as well as here's some things. Here's something that I came across. It says 10 easy and cheap. I don't like the word cheap. Dinner recipes, but they're just really simple recipes <laughs> of what you have in your pantry. So everything here that I have mentioned and I have brought out, are on this list of meals. On this list of meals, chicken. If you had your, if you had your canned chicken, tacos. Come on now, okay. It's a, it's a complete food because you've got your corn, you've got your meat, you've got your cheese, you've got your vegetables. That's all your food groups right there. Okay, so that's good. Sloppy Joe's, pizza, spaghetti. Okay, that's just the staple that won't go away. Okay. Now, this is just one because, like I said, I researched several um, sites that had, you know, what do you do with your pantry items? This is one. And, and again, this is just basic. When it says cheap, I think it, it really means basic, okay, of what it is that you're doing. So I really like to tell you to go and look at your pantry and see what it is that you need. 
okay? And start a list and, start, and go shopping, okay? So again, here's your pantry staples list. And this is what I went through. This, I, I printed this out and I figured, okay, I know what needs to be in a stock pantry, but I just wanna make sure that everyone knows what I'm doing, okay? So even with this list here, when I went through it, I found that I had all these things, okay? I had all these things. So, and I'm not going to give myself credit because, okay, no, I'm a chef. No, it's because I like to eat and I want to make sure I have everything in my kitchen. The last thing I want to do is make sure is have everything in my kitchen. I go, oh gosh, I don't have any oil. Oh God, you know, I don't have any sugar. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to go to the store. But if I make sure I have all these things, you know, already on hand, then that reduces my stress level. You know, and that's what we want to do. We want to reduce the stress level when we're cooking, because when we, when we sit down and we're eating, it's going to be, you know, we're going to be, stress level is going to be down. You know, we're going to eat food that we prepared. You know, your family's going to be, you know, uh, happy because they see that you took the time out for their health. That's just really, really important. Okay. So I need us to really think about having a stock pantry, okay? I want us to put some thought to it. If you need some information, if you need some help, I am available to you, okay? My name is Chef Cheryl Tate. I hope you've enjoyed everything that I brought here. You know, I am a personal chef. I am throughout Southern California. I am with the LA South Chamber of Commerce. This weekend is Juneteenth weekend. We are going to be out and about in the community. I will be at the... Um, Farmer's Market, the Juneteenth Farmer's Market in Compton that's brought to you by the um, Neighborhood Housing Services. It's going to be in Compton on Rosecrans at the Centers for, oh my gosh, I can't think of it, but it's for the Centers for Sustainable Communities. It's a beautiful building off of Rosecrans. We're going to have a farmer's market. It's going to be a Juneteenth celebration. I'll be there. I'll be there with some samples. Please come talk to me. We can talk about your pantry. I'll have some of these to pass out. How's that? Okay. With some stamp, with some staples, um, staples samples and everything. Please come. Please come out this weekend and come talk to the chef. We have some wonderful things that are going on this weekend with the LA Self Chamber of Commerce, with the LA South Hope Foundation, where we're helping other people every day. Now, again, my name is Chef Cheryl Tate. And we talked about pantry basics, okay? There's something here I'm sure that you can take away. I'm sure there's something here that you can take away. We, this is brought to you by the LA South Chamber of Commerce, the LA South Hope Foundation, where we're helping other people every day. I am so pleased and privileged and honored to be able to bring this information to you where I know we are helping each other. I want to thank you for your time. Next month, we're going to be live. We're going to be at Willowbrook Senior Center over in beautiful Willowbrook, California. The topic will be family reunion. This is June, July. Usually we're getting together. We're traveling to go see family. Family's traveling to see you. It's a fun time. It's really a fun time in the summer to get together with your family. So the topic is going to be family reunion. We're going to have um, wonderful uh, uh, food that you would have at the family reunion, okay? So we're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it clean. We're not going to have no pork chops, but that's okay. But at the same token, we want to instill family and food, okay? And what better way can you do that than the family reunion? So that's next month. At, excuse me, next month at Willowbrook Senior Center, the fourth Thursday of every month. We'll be there at 10 o'clock. We'll be there from 10 to noon and we'll have a family reunion and we'll have some good food and we'll have some fun. Again, my name is Chef Cheryl Tate. This is the Chef and with Cheryl Show. This is brought to you by the LA South Chamber of Commerce from the LA South Hope Foundation where we're helping other people every day. Thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you out and about in Los Angeles. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so, so much.
Take care now.